Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> wow. Okay, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you for attending uh, our session uh, this afternoon. Uh, it's going to be a very exciting session. <laughs> <laughs> I'm speaking slowly so that it can be translated more appropriately. But uh, what we're going to do uh, this afternoon uh, together uh, is try to predict the future. It's uh, often hard to predict the future. Uh, however, in this case, it might not be so hard <laughs> because we have uh, with us uh, some colleagues of mine uh, from uh, IBM, but also leaders in the open source and in particular OpenStack communities. Uh, and uh, as you know, oh, hi Monty. Hey, how you doing? Good. Happy to see everybody. Yes, very good. Um, so we have uh, leaders in the open source and particular OpenStack uh, community with us. And, uh, and so the reason that uh, I don't think it would be hard to predict the future is that these folks here are actually defining the future. Uh, they are defining the future of where OpenStack is going to go in the next uh, six months, 12 months. Uh, but also, uh, I think more importantly, uh, working with a lot of you all, our clients, our partners, uh, on implementations. So for the next um, time we have, we will be doing that. So what I would like to do first is ask each of you to introduce yourself, uh, and then we will continue with the panel session. Yeah, sorry, i got to steal your mic here. I, I'm, uh, so hi, I'm Monty Taylor. Uh, you may have uh, remember me from such things as running around on stage uh, in a awesome sauce uh, costume this morning, um, uh, uh, but but also uh, from uh, being sort of in the OpenStack uh, community and ecosystem since uh, since the conversations where we were deciding what to call it. Um, so I've been around, uh, probably have met many of you uh, in, in other times, and thrilled to uh, thrilled to be with uh, with IBM. So I'm Jesse Proudman. Founder and CTO of Bluebox. Bluebox has been working with OpenStack for I think three plus years. Uh, Bluebox was acquired by IBM in June, uh, and as you saw in the keynote today, we launched our Bluebox local on-premises offering yesterday. Uh, and I'm Mo Abdullah, and I'm actually part of the product management and strategy team uh, that really works with OpenStack and the rest of the open cloud architecture, building products uh, that take advantage of those technologies. In some ways, my perspective is one of gratitude to the broader community because a lot of the products that uh, we bring to the market leverage the collective. Uh, and then the other, of course, is the give back aspect, which is how we take a lot of what we learn from a commercial side and continue to grow and nurture uh, what we're doing out there. Uh, my journey with OpenStack started from early days uh, when we really understood the power uh, of unifying uh, the disparate, uh, if you like, uh, architectures and thoughts out there into one that brings multi-clouds together. Glad to see it grow and reach the point it has so far. Hi, Mark Jones, uh, CTO at Software, um, focused on infrastructure. So we've been running OpenStack Swift for about three and a half years now in software data centers. And we've spent the last nine to 12 months working on bringing OpenStack natively into software data centers. And so we actually launched our VM service yesterday um, in the London data center uh, via Bluemix. Yes, I know. <laughs> Step one. Um, it's a great effort across and many teams within IBM to, to deliver that service. And that's, that's the first of many um, announcements we'll have this year and, and well into next year. Okay, so I'm going to start with a uh, very simple question, and I would like to ask each of you to please answer it within a two to three minute time window. I'm not looking at you. Okay. Is it a competition, by the way? Is it uh, like yes, there is a competition. It's always a competition. <laughs> I'm going to start uh, from that side in. Uh, and uh, the question is, can you give the audience 
one prediction as to where you see OpenStack headed uh, in 2016. It could be a dimension around a particular project. It could be a technical dimension. It could be a client dimension. Uh, whatever you like. Let's start with that. All right. So I'll start with uh, the project that is near and dear to my heart at Software, which is Bare Metal. And so that would be the Ironic project. I think in 2015, we've seen Ironic mature. We're seeing implementations um, of Ironic make it into production um, in everything from companies that are deploying um, application stacks onto it, wanting the performance that you can get out of Ironic. And we're starting to see it now in, in service providers. And when we see the evolution of Ironic um, software, one of our core differentiators in the marketplace is bare metal. Um, we've done that since inception uh, back in 2005. And we are putting a tremendous effort into Ironic um, this year and into next year. And I think when you see the evolution of um, compute now with containers, a, a lot of companies are looking to have you know, near bare metal performance but with the ease of use and management of containers. And so Ironic is, is going to be a project that's going to evolve quite a bit in 2016. Thank you. Uh, Mo? Um, my prediction is that um, next year we probably will see uh, an incredible amount of growth in clients who are going to be talking about their stories, leveraging OpenStack in production will go from simple hundreds to many hundreds who will freely share in Austin and conferences after that. And some of the drivers behind it, I believe, is simply the maturity that the community has taken the technology forward from simple discrete components to things that can integrate together through uh, services like heat. So as my team, for example, uh, and many of the leaders in the room sitting in here start to build uh, public cloud services, they're starting to leverage things like Neutron and Swift and others and put them together in patterns that serve the end consumers in applications. People will start to talk less about the individual services and will start to talk more about how they're putting them together to deliver specific client value. And I think people like IBM and others will come forward and start to talk about our journey and in the way we're standing up highly scalable, globally distributed uh, services that are in their core and in their heart built on OpenStack. So thousands of stories and much more oriented around combinations of services. Thank you. If we were on the price is right, I would say there's thousands plus one stories. <laughs> and I, I, would win, I would win the car. Uh, <laughs> my prediction is that we'll begin to see different compute primitives exist uh, and be supported in OpenStack more natively. So Nova has supported VMs and done that very well for a number of years. Certainly with Ironic now, as, as Mark mentioned, we've got bare metal and you see the transition from Nova bare metal now to Ironic. And we're seeing the same thing now with containers with Magnum. So you had Nova Docker originally now Magnum. And I think there's something very compelling and powerful being able to abstract bare metal VMs and containers all within one set of, of APIs, one authentication domain, uh, one network with the work going on in Neutron. Uh, and if you look at many of the application patterns that are being deployed, it's that combination of services, bare metal for IO, databases, et cetera, containers for certain aspects and VMs that make up modern applications. And I think that's where, that's 2016 will be the year of support across the board from a production perspective of all of those capabilities. So I couldn't agree more with, uh, with all of those things, uh, which is my way of saying, also, you're all right, and then I'm going to add something else on it. So that's my, my, uh, my thousand plus one uh, story there, Jesse. Um, uh, but I, I think the, the key word that, I, that already sort of came up um, that I'd like to focus on is the, is the global uh, the, the global service part of this. I think in 2016, we're, we're seeing the, the things we're doing, you know, with, with SoftLayer VM and with, with Bluebox and SoftLayer. Um, the, the key part of that story is the, is the global footprint of that. So as we look at, and we look at public cloud service and we look at, at managed private cloud services for people, it's not just about having a data center in, in Dallas or, or San Jose. It's about having a data center in, in Singapore and in, 
uh, and in Sydney and and all over the world. All all of us, the, there's more people in the world than uh, in not in the U.S. than there are in the U.S. And so the the highly U.S. centric uh, nature of the offerings that have been out there so far, uh, I think we're we're going to start seeing the the real power of a a sort of global first. Uh, uh, global first approach to uh, to public and, and managed private clouds. I'm going to be really excited about that. This is, uh, in this short amount of time, you all have covered uh, four amazing topics, and I think we should write this down and check it <laughs> <right>? <laughs> next year. But but think about it. The, the power of bare metal, right, applied to a variety of programming models because of the utilization that you can get, the performance, that you can get. We, we've proven that out in our software model already, and now it's going to be to the masses with the work that we're doing around, around it. Mo brings an amazing point around moving from atomic elements to composites of elements. I mean, perhaps even our OpenStack marketplace might evolve to a pattern marketplace where there are literally uh, hundreds and thousands of pre built compositions that can quickly be provisioned, managed across compute, storage. Uh, uh, and network. And then, of course, the confluence. Uh, this morning uh, at the keynote, one of the points that Jesse and I made, and, and Jesse made you know, in a much more detail here, is you know, uh, literally in cloud, there are uh, three centers of gravity right now. There is OpenStack, there is the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, containers, uh, and then there is Cloud Foundry. Uh, and if you think about it, uh, OpenStack is the basis, compute, storage, and network. And then there are two fundamentally complementary uh, application programming models that are changing the way folks develop applications. One, Cloud Foundry, a polyglot approach to building applications quickly, systems of engagement, for example, applications, and then microservice based on containers, right? All using the same substrate. Uh, I can certainly tell you that uh, these folks here and our colleagues in the community are going to be working really, really hard to uh, ensure that all of these things come together. We will not duplicate in, say, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation network services. We're going to use Neutron, for example, right? Same thing in Cloud Foundry and everything else. Um, so I think that's a pretty state prediction as well. <clears throat> and then, of course, uh, globalization is a necessity. Uh, you know, the era of the mega data center really is uh, dead. Uh, it is about having data centers fit for purpose where you need it, dedicated across the globe. Uh, we certainly, our clients, you all have demanded that. We've been doing that. I think others are starting now to, to try to un uh, catch up there. Uh, but it is uh, a huge deal. So I think those are four very, very uh, solid predictions. Now, what I'd like to do is offer up some perhaps more controversial or less controversial predictions and, and ask you all to, to debate them. Uh, I got some questions from the audience uh, prior to this. No, I didn't. <laughs> I did not. Um, I do have to say, though, I wish Sean wasn't sleeping over there. Thank you. Um, he's distracting me. Um, uh, first question, uh, and, and well, we've heard this theme uh, several times. Uh, and that is, the distribution is dead. Yeah, okay. Um, discuss amongst yourselves. Jesse, you have something to say about this? Um, I mean, that, <laughs> uh, that's my tagline, so I'm not sure I have a whole lot to say. Uh, but actually, I do, because uh, that's what I do. So, <laughs> look, OpenStack is a challenging set of technology. It's challenging to operate. It's ever growing and expanding. The, the velocity of new projects and of the complexity of those projects, uh, it, it's not, it doesn't stop. And it won't stop if we are going to continue to maintain relevancy in this marketplace. And if you look at software, and you look at software distributions and the Linux distribution, the, the blast radius, the, f the amount of uh, failure that you can tolerate when one server goes down, it was, it was much smaller. A single system may have contained a database or a application server. And that was fine, because if you designed your applications in a certain way, you could tolerate that. When your cloud goes away, for many organizations, that's their entire business. And so selling software that pushes that operational burden 
onto a customer is unreasonable. If you look at the growth in OpenStack from a revenue perspective and where most of the installations are actually occurring, it's from a service provider perspective because we're centralizing the expertise that it takes to track these projects, install these projects, operate these projects, and upgrade these projects into one central provider. Further, you get this concept of a network effect where for every failure that does occur, and they do happen, the learning from that failure, the fix from that failure, gets pushed out to every other customer and can be pushed out in real time in a managed service model. And that's something that just doesn't happen with a software distribution. And so from, from my perspective, and I am mildly biased, I believe that the services model, delivering OpenStack or private cloud as a service, whether it's in SoftLayer in a dedicated approach or in a customer's data center with our local offering, will make customers more successful and make that success occur faster than with a software distribution. And I've, I've not found anybody here who can argue that with me. So if you disagree, come argue with me. I'd, I'd like to. I'd like. No, oh, that's the just. Oh, there it goes. Uh, I'd. I'd like to ag agree and, and sort of uh, poke in a, in a mildly different direction too. We look at things like like Docker and the and the work that's that's going on there, and um, and and you look at what the developers are doing with their applications. Um, and most developers these days, are, like even outside of cloud, they're not focusing on delivering DEBs or RPMs of their, of their software. They're, they're delivering Docker containers. They're delivering that application that they, that they made in a, in a reconsumable form. The, the, the sort of distribution model we've had for the last you know, 15 some odd years has worked well for us. It's, been a, it's, been a, it's gotten us where we are. You know? um, but it, it's predicated on the idea that you're going to have uh, a number of pre, uh, 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 a number of building blocks in the distribution. You can sort of mix and match and install any of them you want to. So you can say apt-get install XM mail server and, and then also a Postgres database and a, and a whatever. And those should all kind of work together. And you can expect that one of them, installing one isn't going to break another one. And that's, that's great. But to Jesse's point, the, the software we're really caring about these days is way more complicated than those tools um, really, really give us the, the, the benefit to, to, to get. So I think even not only in cloud is, is Jesse right, but even just as we're looking at how people are developing software, targeting that software being inside of a, a distribution isn't, it's not how people are thinking. It's not how people are thinking about solving the problem. Because um, it doesn't, it's, it's more overhead than, than it is for the help, so. And I think the, the reality is we've seen this transformation between traditional software that is purchased to software as a service, right? That transformation occurred. Delivering cloud services or OpenStack as a service is no different. It's the same model. It's, it's centralizing that operational responsibility into a, a single party. Uh, and I think the conversation changes, frankly. Not that it's not a point of debate. It's a point of agreement around SLAs. And uh, really, it's not about a supported model in which I'm going to get a distribution, but it's more around what SLA am I going to get? How can I work between providers? It's not dead fully yet, as we agree, because it's a journey, but it's dying. It does not lend itself well to the go-forward model. Okay. Well, you know, it's, uh, it, you know, by saying the distribution is dead doesn't mean that private cloud is dead. What it means is that you want public cloud capability if you want on the public cloud on a dedicated or on-premise locally, right? And, and you've coined the term, uh, you know, private cloud as a service, right? Uh, whether it's on-premise or dedicated. Um, you know, the, the blue box local that you discussed uh, supports that model. I encourage you all to try it. It allows you to more quickly get time to value. Uh, we have some relay technology, which uh, makes it very easy uh, to do that. And I do fundamental, fundamentally believe that this is another layer of abstraction. I mean, if you think about computer science for a moment, uh, if anyone here is a programmer, you know, there has been a constant democratization of technology. We don't program an assembly language anymore, right? We don't strictly, right, define, you know, we, just, we don't use methods, uh, I mean, sorry, functions all the time. We use classes and objects, and we expose data, right? 
For those of us more sophisticated, we might even do inheritance or multiple inheritance, right? Service-oriented architecture is object-oriented programming applied to the network. We don't debate that, right? There is a democratization of technology, and it's happening again now. And I think the quicker we do that means the quicker we can add value, right? And, and that's what we're here for. We're about innovating on, 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 on things. So uh, another uh, question I have here uh, that, that I'd like you all to, to, to debate uh, around the future is around interoperability. Uh, one thing that I'm very proud of, and I know you all too, is, is uh, Catherine is, is our PTL for RefStack, for example. And she's been doing a, a great job. Uh, and this is about interoperability. And uh, how do you see this playing out uh, next year, both in terms of what we actually test, <laughs> okay, because right now it's not as much as it should be, and in terms of people stepping up to actually adhere to these things? So we've, we've got a, we've got a, a saying in, uh, in OpenStack, which I think originally came from uh, Russell Bryant, but uh, 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 which is that if it's not tested, it, it's broken, right? And, and one of the things and one of the reasons that the RefStack effort has been so important um, is that it gives us a, an opportunity to, uh, to be able to test and vet uh, what people are doing with their clouds uh, and also a way to express what behavior we expect them to do. Because we, we did create a, a flexible, pluggable tool for, for people to use. Um, and, and so it's, it's not unfair for people to have made some different choices with it. We, we kind of we built it that way. It's pluggable. Um, but at but that same time, um, that, that now needs to come with uh, a, a thicker instruction manual. A, so yeah, you can do anything you want, but actually, here's some things that are really important that you, that you keep in, right? The, these, are, these are things that our users are gonna demand to exist, and some of this is, uh, things have changed since, since five years ago when we started off. There's a session um, about glance image uploads tomorrow uh, in the design summit, and one of the things in the, in the, in the write-up for it, the, the guy who's, who's leading the session, uh, talks about when we, when we first envisioned Glance, no one envisioned it as an end user service. They envisioned it as a service that Nova would talk to, to, to manage images. And now we've all realized, no, that's actually really important. You, a cloud without image uploads is useless, right? It's not a cloud. That's, that's new information, and all we have to encode that ourselves and also make sure that we're telling everybody that's running a cloud, no, this is really important, seriously. Um, and most of them, once we're really clear, once we make a really clear statement about this is an expectation, almost everybody is, has been really interested in complying and in making sure that they're, because everybody wants their product to be something that users can earn or operate with. Like that's, that's what we're all in this game for. Um, and so I think that the, the work we've been leading there and, and the work that, that is continuing to move in that direction is, is absolutely essential to empowering all of the people in, in our ecosystem uh, to play by a set of rules that, that's, that's beneficial for all of our, our users and customers. So I agree with Monty, and I think from a product perspective, uh, if you look at it, uh, you know, Mark referenced the, uh, the object uh, store beta. Uh, if you look at what clients are trying to do, is you can never box any of them into a single pattern. Different people are starting from different points. And one of the things that are unique around Object Store and the ref stacks and the compatibilities also at the API level is they may start with building applications that take advantage of an Object Store and they're testing those in a market. And then they decide that they want to geographically expand. And this is a true case in, in several of our clients who decided to expand into Europe. Now, just the simple you know, privacy rulings, et cetera, dictate that their application now needs to talk to you know, local object stores. That whole idea of being able to point your application away from a public object store right into one that may be running inside of your own data center, managed by Blue Box, uh, then, you know, without you know, changing the application logic, et cetera, and with speed, is very powerful, very compelling. I recall actually the concept of this we did about six months ago in Vancouver. And I recall everybody laughing at me and going, oh, this is like so simple. Oh, like this is even more simple than somebody shooting crocodiles, you know, on the screen. And, and I was just like, but look, it, it's so simple but powerful. And the room was full with people who were saying, that's exactly the type of scenario we want to enable. And then you extend it further into different application styles. 
So it's you're building these applications based on containers, virtual machines. How do you actually recompose those in different environments? You know, I think one of the things that, that's challenging, it's both a pro and a con of OpenStack, is that it, it really is a Swiss Army knife. There are so many projects, and with this big tent initiative, that, that number will continue to increase. Uh, and that becomes a, a challenge to the, the cloud operator, whether that's Blue Box, whether that's somebody that has bought a distribution or somebody that, like Walmart or, or eBay, has decided to do it themselves. You know, I think that the keynotes on uh, Tuesday from Bitnami where they were saying it's very difficult to figure out that consistency of services from cloud to cloud. That's going to be a problem we continue to see because of the flexibility of OpenStack, because each deployer can choose the projects that suits what they're trying to do. And while I think a huge fan of RefStack, uh, the reality is having consistency in services across every cloud, it, it, it's a challenging proposition. And so that's where I think beginning to see providers in the marketplace that have all three consumption methods that have a public cloud, or dedicated cloud, a local cloud, public and private, and having all of that speak the same technology, if you can get that from one vendor, and there are a few vendors in the market that can, can do that. As of January 31st, there's one less, but there were a few. Uh, that's really important. Uh, and it it's, will continue to be more important as, as we add more projects uh, into OpenStack. Thank you. Uh, you know, I encourage you all um, to demand the expansion on RefStack, to demand the expansion on what we define as interoperability. Todd, why are you smiling? Todd's on the board for us here, you know, so he's been carrying that flag for us. So, so he's doing his part, but I demand all of you uh, to demand the demand. I ask all of you. <laughs> I'm a little tired. I apologize. I ask all of you to, uh, to demand that the expansion of RefStack and also to demand to your vendors, whether it's IBM or anybody else, that they adhere to that because interoperability is going to allow us to succeed. Uh, you know, uh, our job is to make all clouds behave as one, not just IBMs, but all of them. And that's how you get the time to value you need. Uh, this next question is for Mark and for Monty, or, or anybody else, but I'd like to start if it's okay with, with you two. Uh, so let's put a silencer on you in the middle. Uh, and, and, it's <laughs> it's, it, and, and the question really is, is uh, you know, it, it amazes me when I wake up and I see uh, OpenStack available and what we're doing uh, at a global scale. Okay, 40 plus data centers across the world is unbelievable. Not just global scale, but scale scale. And uh, you know, as we do this, we find places in OpenStack that need to improve, that need to change uh, in order to actually manage the scale that you and you are driving together for our clients. Uh, can you give a prediction on some of the areas where you think we might have to change a little bit some of the architecture based on our experiences so far in doing this? Start with Mark or Monty. Yeah, so I think in, in the work that we've done so far, um, I think one of the areas that we see an area for improvement is going to be Neutron. As we start talking about scale and performance of the network, it is the, the key linchpin of everything that we do in cloud, right? Everything rides on the network. And that's everything from initial provisioning to configuration to throughput um, and resiliency. And so I think Neutron is, uh, at least from where we are today, is, is the one that we see a lot going into. Um, but I think, I think you can apply it to every project. Um, we start talking about, as Angel mentioned, we've got you know, 40 data centers. We're initially targeting three data centers for software deployments uh, for OpenStack. But we will extend it to all data centers. And that becomes global scale. Um, and in, within each of those data centers, you have to have full scale up and scale out capabilities. And that's, that's a large footprint. And customers demand resiliency, they resent, uh, demand uptime and performance. And so I think that every project um, is gonna, we're gonna find stuff with, with every project uh, as we go. But, um, but from my standpoint, I think Neutron's someone that's gonna require a lot of work. Um, so uh, a couple things. Uh, one, actually I wanna, wanna 
uh, point out a thing that also happened in yesterday's cross project uh, design summit uh, uh, session, one of the design summit sessions, which is there was a session on uh, uh, starting to map out uh, supporting uh, the extreme use cases as they, as they talked about it. We, we're really good at, at 100 node OpenStack clouds these days. Um, but doing, you know, say a million node OpenStack cloud, not, maybe not so much. And, and then also for the sake of that, that uh, conversation, there's also a question about should we also be focusing on one node, uh, you know, supporting people who want to do one, one node things. Uh, nobody in the room actually uh, raised their hands and said they're really interested in, in the hyper small scale, but it's worth asking the question to, to make sure we've got use cases. Um, but everybody basically signed up uh, to agree that supporting, actually supporting the, the hyper large size things is, uh, is an endeavor that the technical community does think is, is uh, important uh, and agrees that it is, is the thing that has to, to, to get uh, uh, attacked. Um, so that said, uh, things that I think that, that are inside, and I, I apologize to anybody for, I'm gonna geek out on you for just a second. Um, uh, I, I, because I think that the things that, that we're gonna have to attack are actually um, seemingly very boring, uh, uh, non-sexy internals uh, bits of, of all of the services, to, to Mark's point. It's not just one or the other. Um, because we've only been focusing on, on we haven't been focusing on 100,000 uh, node uh, AZs, then the challenges of resource management um, and, and consistent cluster management of the, of the resources that OpenStack manages has been left as an exercise to the, to, to the deployer, right? Mm -hmm. it's, you, we give you a bucket of parts and you, you can do the thing that you need to do. Um, and that, that's fine to a certain point. Um, a, after a certain point, we've got to have more primitives inside of OpenStack to allow the deployer to even manage to keep up with it. Um, so we, we, had a, we had a great session yesterday on distributed lock management, which is uh, probably gonna put half the room to sleep here, uh, but a great, uh, a great session on distributed lock management uh, and, and using uh, technologies like, like Zookeeper uh, as, a, as a fundamental building block uh, for doing resource management and leader election. These are all things that are, that are only partially looked at in, inside of OpenStack right now. And so the, this is, we've got a couple use cases, but this is gonna, the, this ball is gonna start rolling uh, faster and faster forward. Um, so getting those things, uh, turns out scale and manageability kind of kind of go hand in hand. If we just throw 100,000 machines out there and the operators can't keep up with what's going on in them, then it, it's, you know, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a lost cause. So um, these, are, these are areas where we're really gonna stick a lot of energy uh, and make sure that we're, we're, we're enabling us to get to those, to those next generations, uh, you know, uh, orders of magnitude of scale. And I think that, you know, a lot of the talk is around workloads and the type of deployments that we're gonna put onto OpenStack. But when we look at these, these large scale deployments, there's a huge difference between running a public cloud, multi-tenant service built on OpenStack versus running an application that you're able to fine tune and architect to meet the needs of that application. And so as we, as we go global scale, as we go these incredibly large deployments that are multi-tenant, we learn new things that you don't necessarily find as part of, of an application deployment. Yeah, this is it's critically important. And, and, and I, you know, I ask you all to, to take note of that because there will be some exciting changes as we really uh, transition uh, OpenStack uh, from thousands of nodes to millions of nodes. Um, okay, uh, so I'd like to end the panel uh, with uh, one question for each of you again. And I'd also like to ask uh, the audience to take your phones out and use your favorite social media device, uh, whether it's Twitter, Instagram, uh, whatever it is you want to use. Snapchat. Snapchat. Uh, and, and, uh, and then tweet out your favorite Okay. Uh, tweet out your favorite, your your favorite uh, thing that you heard. Uh, but make sure that you do it to me uh, at Angel Lewis Diaz. No, <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, just kidding. Um, no, not really. Um, no, I'm not. Uh, and here's the question: You get one to three words. That's all you have. I'm starting with Monty. Should be very easy for you. Don't worry. Uh, one to three words. Describe the future of OpenStack in one to three words. Globally ubiquitous. Jesse. I don't like this game. <laughs> <laughs>
You can phone a friend. Would you like to phone a friend? All right, how about you think about I'm, it? I'm going to think. Mo? Invisible. Ooh, invisible. Mm -hmm. Very nice. So ubiquitous. Yeah. Similar to... Transformative. Transformative. All right. Pain-free. Pain-free. My word is awesome sauce. <laughs> I'm just saying. Thank you very much for attending. Thank you to our panelists. Thank you, folks, for taking the time. Thank you for coming, uh, and we will see you all. Thank you. Bye-bye.